Good morning, teachers. Good morning, class. The last time you saw me, we were still working on integers. Now we're going to talk about algebraic expressions. For us to do the algebraic expressions, there's certain vocabulary that we first need to look at so that we familiarize ourselves with the vocabulary and then it will be easy for us to do the algebraic expressions. So let's look at the vocabulary. You will see apart from my numbers that I also have letters here. And this is what algebraic expressions are about. And from the expressions, we are going to go to equations, and we will still be using letters. So why are we do using the letters, and what is their meaning? We are replacing a number with a letter when we are doing our algebraic expressions. So we can write a word sum using numbers, and then we can switch it over to an algebraic expression. So that is what we will be practicing. But now before we can do that, as I said, we must look at the vocabulary. Now for an algebraic expression such as this, 3x raised to the power of 5 plus 6. Each of these components will have a name. And when you did... Uh, the previous work on exponents, you did work with this, so we are just going to revise that. The 3 is the coefficient of x, so the number that comes before our value that has been substituted. Uh, the base will be x, and it has been raised to the power of 5, so the exponent of x is 5. Then the 6 that we have here is a constant. What does constant mean? It means that it doesn't change. And that also tells me then that it is something that does change. And what is that? So what we have in our algebraic expression is something that doesn't change, and that's x. x will have, for this expression, a specific value. But the 6 will remain 6. So if we give a value of 2 to x. It will give us a specific answer when we calculate this. But x is a variable. So for every single calculation that we do, it could have a different value. So x will not always be 5 or 3 or whatever. It could have a different value. Then we work with two things. We work with like terms and we work with unlike terms. And what is important with the terms is what it is that you look at. I've given two examples here to explain the principle. Firstly, I used a's and it's 4a plus 2a. So we are working with a's. We have four of them there and we have two of them there. So together, they will give us 6a. So they are like terms and we can add them together. But we could also have them with exponents, okay? And that is where the trouble comes. When we add or subtract our algebraic expressions, we can only do that if they have the same base and the same exponent. Okay, so it can be the same basis if it doesn't have uh, exponent, or it must be the same exponent as well. So what we are saying here, for instance, if we have 3x squared, we have this, and we have another one of it, and we have another one of it. We have three of those x squareds. Okay, that is what we say here. And here we have four. So if we have four apples and we have three apples, we will have seven apples. And it works the same with our algebraic expressions. We have an x squared. That is our term. And here our term is also x squared. So it's the same thing. We can add them together. Four plus three gives us seven. So what did you notice here? What was important was that the bases are the same. 
the basis must be the same. Did it bother us whether the numbers, the coefficients in front of the basis changed? No. That will just change our calculation. But what is important is that the base is the same and the exponent is the same if we want to add them up. So that will be like terms and we can add them up. As I said, if we have four apples and we have three apples, then we have seven apples. What if we have three, three green apples and we have uh, four red apples? Are they still the same? Okay, so if they're not the same, they must be unlike terms. Terms that do not have the same basis. We had an X and an X. We can have an A and an A. We can have a B and a B. Because we can use any number of the alphabet to do the algebraic expressions. It is a letter that substitutes a number for that specific scenario. Okay. So if they unlike terms, they will not have the same basis. This one's base is X. This one's ba base is why? The other thing that is important is that they do not have the same exponents. Remember, we are adding. We're not multiplying or dividing or subtracting. We are adding. And we can only add them when they are the same. So these two are not the same. This is x raised to the power of 4 and x raised to the power of 2. Okay, so they're not the same and we cannot add them because they are unlike terms. So if you get something like that, and I ask you to give me an answer, your answer will be 2x to the power of 4 plus 3x to the power of 2. It will remain exactly the same because they are unlike terms. I want you to use as many as positive aids to assist you when you do your work. So if you don't have a set of color pens or pencils, or you can use highlighters, um, I want you to acquire a set because it makes your work much easier. And we're going to do something along that line. We're going to use different color pens because we want to look at which of these terms in the list that I have given you, and it's quite an extensive list, and we want to see which of these terms are like terms. Okay, so let's use different color pens because that's our instruction now. The first one is 2x raised to the power of 3, so we must look for another one that is the same. So we know those ones are like terms. Are there any more that is x to the power of 3? It doesn't look like that. So let's look for something else. Um, we have a 5x here. We have another x here. And remember what we said. We said the coefficient in front doesn't matter. Now, that's not what we're looking at if we want to recognize like terms. We are looking at the base. So that one and that is the same. Let us observe this one. Whenever you get something like this, the moment you have a bracket, it means that that term has not been simplified. And before you can work with it, you have to simplify the term. Brackets, remember, means multiply. We distribute the 4 over the minus 2x, and we get minus 8x. Okay, and that is the same term, a like term to those. Any other x's doesn't look like that. Let's use another color. We've got an x squared here, so let's look if we can... Find another x squared. Let's just use another color, else the answer will be wrong. 7x squared. Okay. There's another x squared, so we can use that. Now we're left with 
one term. And let's look at this term. We are dividing here. Now, when you worked with exponents, you were told you can expand this and then simplify it. Okay, 3 goes into 9 three times. x goes into itself once and into that x once. x goes into itself once and into that one one. How many do we have left? x squared. So do you see why I'm doing it in blue? Because it correlates with the 7x squared and the 6x squared. It is the same base, the same exponent. Something very important here. I know that sometimes the word cancel out is used, but I don't want you to use that word and I don't want your teacher to use that word. Why? We are not cancelling anything out. We are dividing by the term itself. We are dividing x into itself and we get 1. And we're dividing x into itself and getting 1. If we say cancel out, it means we have to have 0. And that is untrue. So we're not cancelling out. We are dividing by the term itself. So that sh then shows us which of these terms are like terms. They share the same base and they share the same exponent, and we can add or subtract them if we want to. Okay. Indicate in each of these cases, and we've got two, which of the terms, if any, in each set of algebraic expressions are unlike terms. And I've put a catch in here. If you quickly look at it, you see a three everywhere. There's a 3, there's a 3, and there's a 3. So at a quick glance, we think, okay, the same, but it's not. Be very careful for a question like that because the bases differ. Okay, those two are P raised to the power of 3. This one, however, is an A, so it's not the same term. Okay, so this is an unlike term. Now let's look at this one again. Both we have an exponent of 2, but the base is 4, or uh, x, the base is x, and here the base is y. So they are not the same, no, they are two different ones. Here again, as I explained previously, if we get something like this, we first have to simplify. So let's simplify. We have 10 times y times y times y, divided by, it's not over, it's divided by y and y. That is what we get. 5 goes into itself once, 5 goes into 10 twice, and then we divide the term by itself. Okay, so what we have left here is 2y to the power of 2. And let's see if we can find another one that looks like that. Let's just write it there, else it looks like the answer for this one. So that one and that one correlates. Remember, we're not looking for like terms here, although that is what I'm doing. But to, to identify the unlike terms, we first have to identify the like terms. So those ones seem to be the same. Here we have x squared, and here we have x squared, okay? So let's multiply. 3 times 4 gives me 12, okay? But let me do it the other way around, yeah. Let's first do this. We've got a multiplication there, but we also have a raised power. Why can't I do it that way? Because the way it has been written. We have a term here, 4x. And that whole term has to be raised by the power of 2. So what we do here, let's make some space for ourselves to write. 
Okay, is we have to raise this term to the power of 2 before we can multiply it by 3. So let's do that. We are going to say 3 times 4x raised to the power of 2, which means we have to multiply this term by itself. Okay? So in total then, when we do this, our answer will still be 3 because we still have to multiply by 3. 4 times 4 is 16. Okay? And x times x is x squared. Okay? Please remember, we're multiplying here. x plus x is 2x. x times x is x squared. Now, we still have to multiply by the 3. So that will give us 48x squared. And now we can say, okay, this one and this one, which in total is 48x squared, are the same. What was our instruction? Indicate in each case, A and B separately, which of the terms, and look what the instruction says here, if any. In each set of algebraic expressions are unlike terms. So that tells us that they might be one where they are not unlike terms. So there we had an unlike term. Those two are the same. That one differs. Here we have two sets of like terms. So the if any comes in here. We don't have an unlike term with this one. Going back to what we have discussed, I'm going to give you a minute to do this for me, please. You are given the expression, and you have to identify the coefficient of x, the base, the exponent of the base, as well as the constant in this specific algebraic expression. Okay, let's look at the answers here. The coefficient is the number in front of the x, so that will be 3. The base is your variable, which is x. The exponent is always to the right-hand side above of your. So the coefficient is to the left. The number to the right of your variable is your exponent of the base. And then the number there that doesn't change is our constant, and that is 6. We have different kinds of algebraic expressions. There are four ones that we're going to identify. And... Um, I didn't put very difficult ones, but we can actually make them very difficult, and you will see why later. But because I'm going to explain it very well to you, and you are going to concentrate on what I'm saying, we are going to get it right. You will see it will not be that difficult. Okay. An algebraic, 
algebraic expression with one term. We call that a monomial. Mono, the prefix there, means one. Okay, so when you see mono, eventually in signs you are also going to work with mono. You will always know that it is one. That says to us it must be one term. There's one term. Oops, there's two terms. You see there's a three and there's a two x squared, yet I'm saying it's a monomial. Okay? I'm not going to say anything further. I'm going to leave it at that because I'm going to ask you a question because I want you to think about it. Look at the question. What does that mean? That means multiplied. No, that means multiplied. So um, remember that. The next one, we also seem to have two terms, but I am classifying it as a monomial, one term. It is 4y squared divided by 2. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Let's look at the binomials. By, like a bicycle that has two wheels, it is two. Okay, binomial. So, we have a term there and we have a term there. And you see there's a plus sign in between it that separates the two. So, we have one, two terms. There again, we have 2c and we have minus 3b with a minus sign in between that separates the two terms. Okay, I want you to compare that to that. Look at that. 3 times 2x squared. 4y squared divided by 2. And we said it is 1. Okay, now we have a plus there, we have a minus, it's separating the terms into one, two terms, one, two terms. The plus and negative signs divide the terms. Okay, I've given you two more examples here to explain it. I've got 3x raised to the power of 3 divided by 3x plus 7. Now, if we do the same that we did Previously, we expand these. Okay, that is equal to x squared. So whenever you see multiplication sign, whenever in a term or whenever you see division, you know that you still have to simplify the term before you can see whether it's a binomial, monomial, or what the case might be. So this is seven, uh, x squared plus 7x, which then will make it a binomial. Let's look at the multiply one. Okay. That one. 3 times 2 gives me 6 x to the power of 4. So that, in actual fact, is only one term. And this is another term. It's uh, divided by the negative sign, and it gives me a binomial. Trinomial, an algebraic expression with three terms. Now, you see, this is where it can get quite tricky. Remember that I said that a plus and a minus will divide the terms, which mean between that plus and the minus, all of that is one term. It looks like one, two, three terms now, but in actual fact, it is one term. The number in front of the bracket and all the terms within it is considered one term. This speaks of this one. We've got a bracket and we've got a number in front of it. Again, there's division, there's multiplication that still needs to be done. Once we simplified it, we get one term. 
So what is that saying then? If we have a fraction division, it means it's one term. Like you will have a fifth. That is one term. Although it looks like two terms, it's one term. It's just a fifth. Or if you will have three quarters, it is just one term. And it's the same with our algebraic expressions, whether we're using letters now instead of numbers. It is one term. And that just leaves us with the last one then, with the polynomials. An algebraic expression with more than three terms will be a poly. So poly means more, no? means a lot. So if we have more than three terms, it means that it is a polynomial. And there I've got four different terms. Do you see that they all have different bases? A, B, C, D, and that indicates to us that they are different terms. Okay, now here an example. Identify the following algebraic expressions as monomials, binomials, and trinomials. Okay, the first one is a monomial. There's just one. Let's look at the second one. So that one's easy to identify. Let's look at the second one. For us to be able to, to do this, we have to find the like terms, and that is why we started with like terms. We have to see if there are any like terms first. And there we've got that. Now, 3b and 4b... are like terms, and so are 7c and 9c. So in actual fact, we have, if we add those up, we only have three terms, and that will make it a trinomial. Okay. With this one, remember that a negative sign divides the terms. So this will be a term, and that will be a term, and that will then be a binomial. Right, now I have been doing all the hard work today. So now I want you to work some. I've given you some more examples, and you are now going to do the same. You're going to decide each of these, whether they are a monomial, a binomial, or a trinomial, and I am going to give you six minutes to do that. Right, so let's see if you got the answers right. The monomials are always nice because they're very easy to recognize. There is just one term. Okay, I think by now you've caught on to the principle. It's very easy. Just always remember, the moment you see a positive sign or a negative sign, whatever is on the sides of it will give you the terms. So we have two terms there. It's a binomial. 
Our third principle then there, we said, if we have to multiply still, it's still in brackets, we first have to do the calculation to see what we have. So 2 times 3 is 6, and a squared times a squared gives you a to the power of 4. Why am I saying that? What if I gave you another term that was, uh, say, 7a to the power of 3? You have to work out this one to see if it's not maybe the same as that. Or I could have given you 7a to the power of 4, which means these two, although there is a negative sign between it, is the same, which will then cancel out the negative sign. You'll add them together, and it will only be a binomial and not a trinomial. So be very careful. There's two things you have to consider. Once you've looked at plus and minus, that we said that divides the terms. We also have to look at whether some of the terms are like, because then we add them together. So taking away all the extras that were not there initially, this will be a binomial. Okay, let's have fun with them. It's got lots of terms. So let's see if we can identify any terms. Okay. Let's look at these three first. Okay. Be very careful. At a quick glance, they might look the same, but the x here is just x, but is it, it is raised to the power of 2. Here y is raised to the power of 2, but here it's only y. So it's not the same, and there's just x and y. So all three of these are different terms. Now, and then we have the constant. I'm not going to bother to look at that. That looks far too difficult for me. Do you think we should look at that? Why don't we need to bother to look at it? We already have more than three terms. So, we already have a polynomial. No matter what that one is, whatever we were given there, even if it fits in with one of these, it will still be four terms. So, we have a polynomial. So, I just put that difficult one in just to catch you out. Okay, so remember in future, don't start with a difficult one, start with the easy ones. Once you've worked that out, we can establish that it's already polynomial. So that one is not going to even count because wherever it fits in or not, it will just make it more. So it is a polynomial. This part I really like is where we are going to build algebraic expressions ourselves. And you know why we are doing this? And um, remember that you're writing the ANA exam at the end of the year and you'll be getting level four questions, which is higher thinking questions, where they give you those word sums that you hate with a passion. But because we are going to do this, and I'm going to let you write your own algebraic expressions. So you're going to be the teacher for a little while. Um, it's going to become more clear to you. So when we work with this, um, you will understand that it's actually easy. We must just read the, the, the vocabulary that we're working with now, and then it becomes clear to us. So again, remember we said that we're working with voc vocabulary. So what words are we using? And I've used all four operations here. I've used difference, at sum of, product, and quotient. Now, since primary school, you have been working with this, so you should be familiar with them. But we've written them down anyway for you to make sure that you just recap it. If you have forgotten, remember that you must have a sideline here where you are going to do your notes, and then please write that down. Difference means minus, and I want the difference between x and y, okay? If, and look at what I'm saying here. I wonder why I put this here. Let's see. Um, because you have to do difference between x and y. Okay, that's fine. That's fixed. So now you might say, so why did I bother to put something else? Because I've already done what I've asked here. Let's look at two scenarios. Okay. 
x is larger than y, okay? So let's do it in numbers that we are familiar with. Let's say we have 5 minus 4, okay? Then it will be x is 5 and y is 4, then it will be x minus y. But what if x is smaller? So let's say x is 4 and y is 5. What will our answer be the yeah minus 1. Do you see what difference it makes? Do you see why I have to indicate that? Because it will change our algebraic expression here. Okay. The sum of a and 5. We just add them. The product we have to multiply. And there are several ways that we can do that. You know, when we write a x and we write a multiply, sometimes it's very confusing. What is multiply and what is x? So you will see whenever I'm working with this, I try and use just a point there to say multiply. So you are welcome to use that. It is correct. Okay? And of course, what we said as well is that if we have brackets, it also means multiply. So we could actually write this one in two different ways. The product could be x times y written like that, or x bracket y, which means we have to multiply them. And this is how we build algebraic expressions, going from our words to our algebraic expressions. Then the quotient means divide, and we will just simply say A is divided by A is divided by B. So that is how we write it in words and then move it over to algebraic expressions. Okay. I have an example here for you, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to rest a little while, and I'm going to ask you to do these three for me, please. And I'm only going to give you a few seconds to do this because it is really simple. You just need to write them down. The square of E. Three times D. Divide Q suite between all learners, and there's a follow-up question, how many suites will each of the learners get? So if we square E, we write E, and we just simply square it. If we write 3 times D, We will write it like that. Now, this last one, that looks at it. We, what is the number of suites? Let's say we have five suites or 15 suites, and we divide it amongst five learners. Isn't it that is the way we will write it? We've got 15 suites. We divide it by five learners, and if we simplify that, we know that each learner will get three. It is nothing different. What is different? We are just using a letter instead of a number. So the operation is exactly the same. So it's not difficult. We're just substituting the number with a letter. How many suites do we have? We had 15 here. We have Q. So we write Q. We divide it between the learners. Okay, how many le uh, did learners did we have? There are five. Here we have our learners. Okay, so there's our division. Just in letters, there it was in numbers. Now, how many will each get? What did we do to get the number of learners for sweets? Here we divided the 15 and it gave us three. Now remember what we said about unlike terms and also like terms. Now, can we divide the two unlike terms? Can we say Q goes into itself once and Q goes into R three times? No, we can't. It's not the same term. No. Like we, there we had numbers, so we can work it out. Here we have letters, so we cannot. If it was A and A, we have 15 suites. We divide it by 15 learners. Each will get one. Then we can do it because it's like terms. 
if we have unlike terms, remember what we said, then it remains like that, okay? Whether it's um, yeah, uh, Q divided by R or any other subject, uh, uh, symbol that we use, it will remain. So how many will each get? Each will get Q divided by R. And that's our answer. So is it getting easier? I'm sure it's getting easier. Because you, in the beginning, I'm sure you all nodded your heads and said, I can't do word sums, I hope she's not going to do word sums because I can't do that. And here you have been doing them. And the more we practice them, the more it's going to become easy for us to do these word sums. Okay, so let's look at the algebraic expressions. Okay, there's three of them, and this is an activity again for you. Here, we have more than one, so just be careful. Look at your words, okay, and then just look at the terms I am giving here, the terms of algebraic expressions, because there are two there. So let me give you a minute to do these three. Okay, so what do you think the answers will be? The difference tells us that there must be a minus, okay? What are we minusing? 2A minus B and minus 6C plus 4. Now this looks very confusing to me. Do you agree? It's going to be very hard to figure out how to do this if we write it like this. Why? Here, we put it in brackets. And now immediately I want to caution you. I'm just going to write it here. Okay. I said, when we have brackets, we multiply, okay? But look at the difference. There is a term outside the bracket which we have to distribute across what is within the bracket, whether there's one or two or three terms. No, we have to distribute it with whatever is inside our bracket, okay? Then we multiply. This, however, that we're dealing with here has nothing to do with multiplication. We are just separating the two terms because look at this. So what we have here is a minus and a minus. We are not multiplying here, but because we have two minuses and you saw how awkward it looked, we are just putting it in a bracket to say this is a term and that is a term. And we're subtracting this one from that term. Okay, then our last one. Add the sum of u and v to the product of p and q. You see what I'm doing with my color pens? And you should do that too. I am telling myself what goes together because there's a lot of information here. So the sum of will be U plus V. And the product of P and Q will be P times Q. Okay, what must I do with it? I must take that and I must take that and I must add them. Okay, we can put the brackets again to show that must be added to that. 
That thing concludes our activity. And all that we are left with then is our homework that you will do vigilantly this afternoon. Thank you very much.